I bought the land back in 1996 just as a hobby farm. It was bare land, it um, had old buildings, it had no power, it had no water and from there we started to build it up and back in the year 2000 Lorenzo Galli from Galley Quarries and whatever, he had the vision of buying the place across the road and wanted water and wanted grapes and about 14 of us banded together and built a pipeline from Colburn Abbon to cross through the district and that's really what opened up this whole district for grapes and vines and suddenly when you got water 160 acres is a, quite a big property rather than just being a hobby farm. But one of the hardest things I think in anything is to reimagine something as it could be rather than what it is and so you had to sort of step away from just because there was a fence there doesn't mean you had to put another fence there and that sort of thing was always the, I think in any creative endeavour it's sort of stepping outside what the lines on the page are and imagining something different. But the name Shiraz Republic was sort of a, probably the second version. We, we called it originally Cornella Ridge Estate. Uh, this is the district of Cornella, the old post office was here and all that. Um, but it just, I've never been very, a big fan of traditional um, vineyard names and things like that and just winery names. They always seem a bit wanky um, and probably forgettable as well after you've visited three of them. The name itself came to me when I was, I was doing some work um, in the Pacific with the AusAid um, and I was sitting in a cafe in Samoa, I think it was, and there was a, the cafe was called the Republic of Cappuccino and, um, and it struck me that uh, Shiraz Republic would be a great name and a memorable name. But I was always reluctant to actually put it up as a sign because I thought people would think I thought I was Prince Leonard of Hutt or something like that and seceded from Australia. So we kept it as a label for probably four or five years and then eventually it just took over and you realise, you know, we people just talked about it and related to it and remembered it. So that's what it became. Spencer's my son. Yeah, it's a good start. <laughs> <laughs> and after he finished his studies of a Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science, he decided that uh, he'd like to create a job for himself here rather than work in an office or lab. When I started, I was president of the Republic, president for life, as all good republics should be. <laughs> and now I'm president for now. <laughs> and. Um, we always say there's a fine line between a succession plan and a coup, and um, you know at times. Yeah, at times <laughs> we walk that line pretty closely, uh, <laughs> but you know for nominal reasons I still remain the president-elect, yeah. uh, sitting sit next to the president here. Yeah, but it's a good exchange of ideas, and you know our pr policies, our framework's always been the problem's a problem, make the problem a problem, and work it through on the ideas. And I think it's been a battle of ideas at times, but really very productive battle of ideas. Yeah, so as the resident chemist, uh, once the fruit comes in off the vineyard, it tends to be my baby. Um, we did have a couple of contract winemakers and obviously uh, working pretty closely with Dad in making the wine for the first couple of years. Um, and just through sort of self-learning, I guess with, with chemistry, I had the fundamentals down pat. It was just learning the real specific, uh, sorry, specific uh, parts of winemaking, the, the different sort of sampling and testing. Uh, that goes on and, and following those processes through um, that I sort of had to pick up and have picked up pretty quickly um, over the time. Um, and then I guess, yeah, you know, it starts out in the vineyard and there's always a bit of 
debate as to when to pick and what's best to pick and you know what's sometimes what's the wine maker wants isn't what what the uh, the, the vine grower wants, but uh, you know we, we make it work. And um, uh, but it is actually something that I really um, compared to brewing, I much prefer, uh, or at least is, is a really positive difference to brewing is that uh, you don't actually have that control. You know, no two seasons in a vineyard are the same, so you can't carry in the same mindset from one vintage to another vintage uh, because you're dealing with different flavours, different fruit, and the wine is just going to express itself differently. So, you know, there's a lot of collaboration that has to go on in, in what the fruit's looking, on, looking at from an early stage, from pruning, uh, to obviously make sure we're ready to go at harvest. Um, but then, yeah, I kind of, I like the lack of control that you've got once it's, in the, once it's in the winery, once it's fermenting, it's active, you're just tasting, smelling, looking, and, and making decisions on the run. Sort of more like a collaboration with the fruit rather than this sort of top-down approach whereby, you know, we're making the wine the grapes, the vineyard nature and the seasons really control probably 90% of the fruit and the character of the wine and I'm there to sort of look after that last 10% and uh, make sure it gets into the bottle in a tasty way. Thank you.